So most of you that are here, I'm assuming everybody's here to build muscle. Everybody, if I can, if I can make the assumption you're here to build muscle, maybe I can make the assumption that you're not quite content with the the way the muscle building is going for you. And um, here's the reality. Everybody hear me? Okay. Okay. Um, here's the reality. Um, most people say they want to build muscle, and they their values don't align with that. Most people say they want to build money, and their values don't align with that. And uh, what that means is sometimes people crave comfort more than they crave progress. And if you're someone who craves progress or comfort more than you crave progress, you simply can't get the results you're after, right? At some point in our journey, we have to uh, ultimately step into discomfort. And that doesn't mean it's hard, right? And that's one of the main topics I want to talk about today is um, changing your perception of hard is a big part of this conversation because you know, of the maybe 100 plus people that are on here, um, many of us uh, say, hey, you know what? I want to have a great body. I want to be lean. I want to be healthy. I want to be muscular. Does that sound like something most of us are saying? Yet, when it comes down to following a plan, following a training workout, following a diet, uh, oftentimes we choose social life. We choose complacency. We choose comfort over following the plan. And just, just want to point it out to everyone. If, and there's nothing wrong with being social, and there's nothing wrong with having a life outside of the gym, but you have to be uh, become conscious of your decision making processes to allow you to say, "Hey, I have a goal right now. I'm going to intentionally put these other things that I know are conflicting with my goal aside and allow me to focus on what this goal is." Right? People who succeed in life are the ones who say, "Hey, I'm, I've got this goal, however long the timeline is." And I'm going to follow through no matter what, right? Become the type of person that follows through on goals no matter what. It's going to get hard. It's going to get challenging. It's not going to get hard. I think that word hard is, is, is misused. It's going to be uncomfortable. And, and so let's delineate between the word hard and the word uncomfortable, right? Hard means, uh, for, for me, I you guys may have heard me say this before, I've never done anything hard in my entire life, right? I've never had a hard day in my entire life, right? Because as you as you as a means of comparison, right? Hard work is perception. Hard compared to what? Right? In the webinar we did on Thursday, I said hard compared to a Navy SEAL. Is your day hard? Is your day hard compared to somebody who went a hundred mile marathon? Is your day hard to to uh, James Lawrence who just did a hundred tri triathlon um, Ironman distance triathlons in a hundred days? A hundred triathlons in a hundred days. Is your day hard compared to that? Right? And yes, I, no doubt, some of us are having hard times financially, or some people are struggling. Some, you know, there, there's definitely some challenging times. But there's always perception, right? Compared to what? And so there's some out there struggling more than us. So always just be, take a moment to um, be grateful for who you are and what you've got. And I'd like all of us to start today by doing that, right? It's just like go go around in your mind for a moment and go and think of the things you have to be grateful for. Now here's the catch in gratitude. And this is not going to be a lesson in gratitude. But here's the lesson. Here's the, the catch in gratitude. Wait, to become grateful for the things that are, are easy in life, the things that you have, that's easy, right? Learn to be grateful for the things in life that maybe are your challenges, maybe your obstacles, maybe the things that you're struggling with right now. How can you learn to be grateful for it right now? Right? So when it comes to your training and your fitness, you all, we all have obstacles in front of us. We all have challenges. We all have things in our life that are maybe holding us back. Maybe we all have a reason, an excuse as to why we aren't get there yet. But that's not the same as not being able to do it, is it? It's like, yeah, I'm not there yet. It's not the same as I can't. It's simply that I'm not there yet. So I want to encourage all of you guys, if you are uh, on this path of improving your physique, whether that be for yourself or for coaching others, start to challenge the way you look at your reality, right? Start to challenge your perception of your reality because the only way you're going to become greater than you are right now is if you learn to think differently than the person you are right now, right? So my suggestion, again, as we're going to go through these slides, there's some, there's some tips in there that are going to help you guys think differently, think bigger than you are. But it starts with questioning your bullshit, Right, question things you say that all that are consistently holding you back. I can't, I'm not able to, my genetics, my time, my money. Right? You will never have those things if you don't change your perspective now. Right? So and, and I'll get into the slides here in a minute. And the slides tell a little bit about my past. And some of you guys may not know my past, but 
Um, I'll, I'll start right now. Everybody good? Ready to rock? All right. So one of the things I want to impart you guys with today is, oops. Um, is this reality that muscle building isn't hard. Nothing about muscle building is hard. You simply don't know how to do it yet. And so as we as we progress through this um, webinar, I want you all to acknowledge that something in your life that you now do with ease was once hard, right? So if you have a belief that muscle building is going to be hard for you, that will become your reality. Muscle building is not hard. Muscle building is quite simple. You just don't know how yet. And my objective for this webinar is to be able to hand you the understanding of all of the things that go into building muscle and creating a simple framework for you to start understanding how to do it effectively, right? So if you guys know anything about me, um, I was a, a longtime professional bodybuilder, put on a lot of muscle, and uh, I once said it was hard. I once believed that I couldn't. I once believed that I had bad genetics. All of those things fell aside as I just simply took one step in front of the next, one foot in front of another, right? So it's just like one step a day. You don't have to do it all today. You don't have to be perfect today, but you got to make progress. And that's, again, that conversation will be built in today's, into today's webinar. So... First, everyone, welcome. Thank you for being here. Um, I know that, uh, you know, time is valuable, and I don't take that lightly. And uh, I, above all, value my time. I mean, above, uh, as equally to anyone in this world, I value my time because um, I have things in my life that I absolutely love to do, and I want to invest as much time as I can into those things, namely spend time with my family, right? Maybe growing my business, maybe spreading this message, so that I can that I can help more people. And you know why I do this? It's not about the muscle for me. The muscle for me is easy. Like I teach you guys muscles because that's what you want. Here's what I really want. I want you to be empowered to realize you can do anything. Muscle to me is like the doorway. It's like opening the door to confidence and empowerment. If I can build muscle and get lean, it just, if you guys have never done that before, it's the most empowering thing to realize that I can right? As soon as I say, oh man, I did it. I'm the type of person that sets a goal and follows through. That's what I hope to accomplish for each and every one of you guys today and for the rest of your lives. It's like, hey, set a goal, right? And then follow through on that goal every day. And if you don't know how, that's why I'm here. If you don't know how, somebody out there has done it before you. Somebody has carved the path. It's not hard. You simply don't know how yet. So once you figure it out, now listen, you're like, man, I did it. Like, what else can I do? So here's the thing for all of us today. If you're not already setting goals, small goals, set small goals. Do it every day. Itty bitty things. Because guess what happens? Eventually it gets bigger. Eventually it gets bigger. You know what else gets bigger? Your confidence gets bigger. As your goals get bigger, so does your confidence. So does your self-esteem, your belief in yourself. Why does your belief in yourself grow? Because you're doing it. You're like, holy shit, I didn't think I'd be able to do that. Do hard things, right? Hard things. So here's our agenda for today. We're going to go over 12 anabolic levers. And again, I'll give you, I'll tell you more what that means. Go a little bit through the champion's mindset. And that's kind of what we're talking about to start, right? It's like people who succeed have a very specific way of looking at life. And it starts in gratitude, right? You can be um, a victim or you can be empowered. Everybody remember this. This may be the most important thing you learned today. It's, it's one or the other. You can't be a victim and empowered, right? You're either a victim or you're empowered. And anytime you're using victim words, and this is one of the slides in here, you won't succeed because you're taking the power outside of yourself and you simply will not well, because you believe you can't. The government, yes, I know that's that's ironic right now, um, but the government is bad. Uh, my genetics are bad. My job is bad. My boss is bad. My spouse is bad. Maybe it's true, but if you don't take a responsibility for that, you can never change it. So again, we can't change our government yet, um, but it's, uh, it, it's an interesting um, uh, belief to say the only thing I can control is my daily actions, how I show up every day. So I want to show up every day at my highest and best because guess what? The government's going to change. The seasons will change. Things will go up. Things will come down, right? So all I can do is, is determine how I show up. Am I showing up at my, at my best, right? And forget about the whirlwind around you, right? It's this idea. 
put on the blinders, move forward towards your goal. Here's the catch. You got to have a goal. You got to have a worthwhile goal, right? You got to have a worthwhile goal that wakes you up every day inspired to be your best, right? Wake up inspired to be your best. Wake up inspired to crush it. And if here's the thing, this is another one of the slides that I'm kind of spoiling, but if you can't, or if, if you're not waking up every day inspired, there's a few reasons why. Maybe your health isn't great. Your energy is low. Maybe your, your uh, nutrition is off. Maybe your dopamine systems aren't developed, um, right? Maybe you're not, maybe not healthy enough. Could be a lot of those things. We won't, we'll, I'll get into these a little more. And there's a bunch of other stuff here if you guys want to read through this slide. Um, all right, so here's the things I want to do. If you guys are taking notes, which most people are, and I suggest you do, um, this the first thing we want to do, if we want to succeed in anything, create a clear and measurable goal with a timeline, right? So if you say, hey, I want to build 20 pounds of muscle in the next six months, which is kind of the offer of this program, of this webinar, then let's do it. And don't take your bullshit reasons as to why you can't. Just do it. Don't even, like, don't even entertain the possibility that it, oh, no, it's impossible. Bullshit. I've done it numerous times in my life, and I've done it hundreds of times with other people. But yet you have all these people. And it's funny. When I, when I posted it on social media, I have these kids go, oh, it's bullshit. You're going to put on a couple of pounds of muscle per year. I'm like, yeah, when you train like you or when you eat like you, come train and eat like me, and I'll see what we can do, right? It sounds arrogant, but it's the truth. And I've done it numerous times, hundreds of times with people all around the world, uh, men and women, right? Um, anyways, so what, in 2016, we did a, a coaching program with 30 people. The average of muscle gain was 30 pounds in six months. Uh, sorry, 26 pounds in six months. Average. And that was women too. And people were like, that's insane. I'm like, well, yeah, because we did things correctly, right? We checked all the boxes, which, which is what I'm hoping to impart you guys with today. All right. So the, the two things that you know, we're kind of addressing as we move through this. It's confidence and clarity, right? I want you to have the confidence to know you can and the clarity to know the path. And that's my objective today. What's the path, right? What's the path from to, to go from where I am to where I want to go? And here's the thing. Most of you don't even understand where you are, right? So if you look at your, I mean, obviously you understand where you are in space, but as far as understanding what your body is right now, where, where your body is, what is your body capable of? That's what I'm asking, right? So what is my body capable of right now compared to what I want it to be capable of in six months, right? And then how then do I fill that gap? How do I create a clear and measurable path between here and that? Whatever that is for you. So it's like, hey, I'm 20% body fat now. I want to be 10. Great. So let's create a path. It's, it's also very important to know why you want to be 10 so that when it shit gets hard, which it does, or not hard, but uncomfortable, why you should you continue? Um, but so identify where you are now and be, be honest with yourself, right? Don't be, don't be um, gentle. Don't use softeners. Be completely honest with yourself. This is where I am now, right? One of the problems we have in life is if, or in society, you should say, not in life, is people tend to be uh, nice, right? And I think being nice is great, but I think honest is being, being honest is, is better, right? I love to surround myself with people that are honest most of the time um, because honestly, Honesty is the foundation of progress. If I tell you bullshit about the way you look, and I'm like, oh, you look great. You look, feel, you, I mean, how do you, and like, oh, I feel great. I feel awesome. And you're lying about it. Guess what? You're not going to, you're not going to be motivated to change. So start there. Get clear on where you are and get clear on where you want to go and be honest with yourself, right? Be honest with yourself about, well, am I actually this? Or, you know, like, hey, this is the funniest thing. You've all heard this before. They ask me how much, what their body fit is. They go, oh, I'm like 12%. No, you're like 24, right? This is constant. Oh, I'm single digits. No, you're not. You know, they, you know, this is a funny story. Anybody here competed? Here's the crazy thing. Most people compete around 8 to 10% body fat, usually closer to 10. Some people compete at 12% body fat. Everyone goes, oh, I'm shredded. I'm like 5%. No, you're not, right? So I've been under 5% maybe four times in my life. Like 5% is really, really low. Like people that compete don't go anywhere near 5%. But because you step on stage, like, oh, I'm single digits. No, it's not the truth. But people are, are, they try to build up their ego with falsehood, right? Don't build up your ego with falsehood. Seek reality, seek honesty, because that, that's what makes you better. People who succeed in life are willing to be honest and brutally honest with themselves and take that feedback and go, I'm going to make progress. The reason I succeeded in bodybuilding, I was my own worst critic. I came off stage or if I was getting ready, I'd be like, man, I was shit. I know that. Therefore, I'm going to get better. If you're always like, oh, I did okay, and I'm like, I'm always looking for these positive results. And again, I'm all about positivity, but I'm also about realism, right? 
po- be positive where, where positivity is, is uh, welcome, but be real with yourself, right? And that doesn't mean being down on yourself. That means like, hey, just be, be honest and go, this is what I look like. This is what I feel like. I'm not happy with this. Stop telling stories about, you know, oh, I feel good and I'm great. I'm the, no, be honest and let's make progress because when you're lying to yourself, you're preventing yourself from having the opportunity to step into your greatness, right? If you want to step into your greatness, it sometimes requires brutal honesty with yourself, right? And again, I'm not telling you to hurt anybody's feelings. I'm not telling you to, to uh, you know, piss anybody off, but at least with yourself, be honest. And here's the thing. If you can't be honest with somebody in your life, your spouse, your partner, whomever, be honest in your journal, write yourself down. Right? This is why journaling is valuable. Like, hey, this is how I actually feel. And then this is what I'm actually worried about. This is what I'm actually afraid about, right? So I'm afraid of. Think about it. Anyways, I'm a bit of a tangent. All right. So throughout today's um, webinar, my objective is to give you guys a ton of value. Like, I want to give you as much value as I can so that ultimately you get from where you are now to where you want to be. One, it requires honesty. With yourself, it requires objective um, measurements. So, like, see, like actually, let's see where I am. Uh, maybe it's measuring your waist. Maybe it's measuring your, your arms. Maybe it's measuring your legs. Whatever, measure, and then let's progress. And my objective is to create the most clear and concise plan to where you want to go. And uh, again, just reminding yourself always: doing these things is not hard, right? Changing your muscles is not hard. Getting lean is not hard. Changing your life isn't even necessarily hard, right? There's, there's just resistance because you, your brain likes to stay in a homeostatic place. It likes to stay in this place that's comfortable. Your brain seeks comfort, right? Because that's safe. Your brain seeks safety and comfort. So if you want to uh, expand and be greater than you are now, you have to be willing to do something you've never done before. That doesn't mean it's hard, right? I call it the disturbance in the force, right? So if, I, if I'm doing something I've never done before, it feels just like chaotic almost, right? You're learning to feel what that feels like in your body. And, and, and you're just, oftentimes, if it feels hard, you've created an association with a feeling in your body that, hey, this, is, this, this feels hard. You put, you put a label on it, when in reality, it's just a sensation in your body, right? It's the same thing as if someone burns your, your finger. That's not necessarily a bad thing. It's simply a signal to say, don't do that again, dummy. So that, that's, the, that's how we should start framing um, these signals in our body, right? Yes, I feel uncomfortable. I feel a disturbance in the force, but I'm going to smile and move toward it. People who are succeed, who, people who succeed, mo- intentionally move toward challenges, right? If you're someone who avoids challenges, you're screwed. You have to. In, in, and here's why I think this is the best thing of life, or the training. Training is the best thing of life, is because training is an opportunity to every single day determine how you respond and how you act around challenges. So if, I, if I'm walking into the gym and I see a challenge in front of me and I go, oh, like I can do that or I can walk that way, you're literally uh, reinforcing your character in that moment. Here's a crazy story. This, is, this blows my mind. When I was a bodybuilder, you guys knew, many of you guys know that I was known for having the best legs in the world at the time. Maybe not, maybe, but that's what people told me. Um, and uh, so many bodybuilders would go, uh, I'd be like, hey, you want to train someday? Like, no. I'd be like, why not? Well, I don't train with you. Why not? Well, because you, you, train, you train really hard. I'm like, what? So a guy who wanted to beat me on stage or guys who wanted to beat me on stage refused to train with me because they trained too hard. Think about that. I was like, I just won the psychological warfare. You're afraid to train with me. If, so if, if when I was coming up, if Ronnie Coleman would have said, Ben, Let's go train. I would have said, and I just finished legs. And he'd be like, hey, Ben, let's go. I'd be like, Ronnie, let's go. I'm going to change my shirt. I'm ready to go. Right? It's like this idea of intentionally moving toward, I don't know if I'm going to make it out alive, but I'm going to do my best. Right? And this is the attitude. is like, don't avoid challenges, man. When something looks hard, go, yes, I'm in. I have no idea how I'm going to do it. I'm going to do my best. And then it's going to force me to become more present and more focused and more effective. Right? That's what this life is about move toward challenges instead of away from them. So point being, as you see things in today's webinar, I want you to commit to moving into them. Right. And you're like, like, oh, I don't really shit at that. Good. Move into it. Do more of it. Right? Like I'm really bad at following a diet. That's why you need it. I'm really bad at I don't know, doing squats. Good. Learn how to do them. 
right? This is what I want you guys to, to perceive. The word good comes up. You guys have maybe seen that Jocko Willink video on uh, YouTube. Good. If you haven't seen it, watch it. It's good. It's get you fired up. All right. So deal is if you see something in here that is valuable to you or any of these things that are valuable to you right now, you take notes and you execute, right? You execute because uh, one of the things I hate is coming here and wasting your time, wasting mine and not getting a result. So I want to all of us to commit to each other, the 110 people that are here right now, that we're all going to commit to each other to keep each other accountable to progressing, right? I'm here for you guys. And if you want, as we go through this, one, you can take a screenshot now, share it on social media to show your friends and your family that you're committed to improving yourself. But every time you do something that you've learned on this, this webinar, I want you to tag me. And I want you to go, hey, Ben, I learned something webinar. Thank you. Uh, and, I'm, uh, and show me that you're executing on it. Right. So this is something I make my people in my coaching program do is uh, we do a top five every day. Like here's the top five most important high impact habits that we do every day. And we just screenshot it and post it in the group. Right. Why? Because I want to know you're doing it. And I want to know that it's that you're executing because right. Knowledge is useless. So many people theorize and think and, and plan and don't do shit. So execute. Sorry, I might cuss minimally. All right, become a type of person that follows through. Here's just a few of our, our successful buyers. And these are, uh, we've got so many of these hundreds, if not thousands of great people who have succeeded. Let's get down to business. All right, everybody write in the chat box right now. Tell me why you're here. Tell me the exact reason why you're here, but I want you to think about it for a second. Why are you here? Are you here to be healthy? Are you here to be stronger? Are you here to look great? Are you want to be sexy? Are you want to have confidence? Are you want to achieve a goal? Why are you here? Everybody write that comment. Here's what I think of why you're here. Ultimately, there's only one reason why we're all here at the end of the day. And, th and this may not have been the reason what you, that you thought, but here's what I think you should think. To become the type of person that sets a goal and follows through. That's it. Why? Because that's all that matters in life, right? Integrity, goal-directed behavior, and positive outcomes and follow through ultimately, right? So I set a goal, I follow through, and I accomplish the goal. Guess what happens? We accomplish bigger goals, right? Start small, bite-sized goals, and progress toward them because you can, right? If anyone said, ah, stop it, stop yourself. Yes, you can, right? You want to be healthy? Become healthy and lose your bullshit reason as to why you can't. Oh, you know, it's because I like junk food. What? I can't believe when people say that stuff to me. Like, I won't do that because I don't talk food too much. What? Like, you, you want, you're okay with dying? Like, we don't value life? Like, just prioritize yourself, right? You matter, right? You matter. You can do great things in this world. You can do anything in this world if you simply focus. You simply set a goal and follow through. Nothing in life, few things in life are hard. Some things in life are hard. Not, not, it's definitely not nothing. All right. One of the reasons many of you are here, and I hear this often, is um, you feel like you are not getting the results for the amount of time invested, amount of time and effort invested. Does that sound like some of you guys? Okay. Why? First thing that came to mind. Mm -hmm. Time. Mm -hmm. Genetics. Bullshit. It's any excuse that just came to your mind. It's not true. You simply don't know how yet, right? So you should be getting, it's like the best metaphor. Does anyone here have a, a habit of reading a book a week? I think that's a great habit. I like to do that. I don't do it all the time. I listen to audio books every day. I definitely don't do a book a week. Here's the thing. Is it uh, sensical? Is it a good idea to read a book a week if you remember nothing? Is the goal to read the book? Or is the goal to get something out of the book, to get the lessons and, and the wisdom out of the book, right? I hope we all say, well, obviously the lesson, the goal is to get the lessons out of the book. No shit. So why do we read a book a week and then we look back and go, I don't know what the hell I read. That's how people exercise. People exercise to say that they exercise, just like they read a book to say that they read a book. Nobody gets results in the gym. Most people I've seen five, over the last five years, I've seen them in five years, they come back to look exactly the same. Right? Most people read books, 
see them in five years, they haven't made any progress in their life, right? They're reading a book to say they read a book. They're doing the training to say they did they went to the gym so they could feel good about themselves in the moment, but not actually progress. Do you see what I'm saying? If you actually want to progress, you have to take time with the book. You have to learn to understand the language. If I give you a book in Chinese and I go read this, you could read the words. You don't have to know what they mean. You could read them, right? Same thing in exercise. This is what pe most people are doing in exercise. It pains me. It pains me to see people go in the gym and go, oh, um, yeah, uh, I've been training for five years. How's your results been? Shit. Oh, well, that's wonderful. Why are you wasting your time? You should be sitting home with, being with your family, right? Why? Let's, when we go to the gym, everybody with me on that? I go to the gym. I like to invest my time. I want to invest my time like invest my money. Do you want to put your money under your mattress so you wake up in five years and it's like depreciated? Or are you going to put your money into a high return investment account where you're like, oh, shit, I got like twice as much money here. I don't know about you, but fast forward 12 months, 24 months, five years, I want to be better than I am now. I'm not just trying to kind of exist to wait out my life. Like I'm getting better. I'm, I'm, I'm like fine wine, right? That's the objective. Everyone's like, man, like you're looking great. I'm like, I fucking hope so. I'm putting in the work, right? Doesn't that make sense? So... For any of you who have in, in the past not had the results maybe you're after for the amount of time invested, it's not that you can't, it's not your genetics, it's not your time, it's not your whatever excuse, simply you haven't figured out how to do it yet and my objective for today and my entire business is to teach you how to do it because I think that exercise is the gateway to a better life because you become more empowered, you develop your confidence. It's a controlled state, a controlled uh, environment where you can uh, challenge yourself, right? So whatever it is, I can, I can kind of take inventory of what is my mental state around this thing? Oh, why am I wanting to avoid this? Oh, why am I afraid of this? And I can feel those feelings and emotions and do it anyways. And then when I feel those feelings and emotions in other situations in life, I'm familiar and I know how to react. It's literally like training your, your response systems, right? I can train my, my desire. Like I walk up to a deadlift bar and I'm like, holy shit, I'm panicking. You got this. Let's go. Right? You can train that response in a controlled environment. That's the coolest opportunity that exists in exercise, as well as working hard, having fun, feeling good. All right. So, as I said when we started this, many of you guys don't know a lot about my past. But that's actually a picture of me. I'm just kidding. It's not. It looks pretty close. Actually, this next one does. Check this out. That kind of looks like what I looked like when I was like eight. And I was probably eating that. And was that cheeseburger or something? I was probably eating the same thing. True story. So I grew up in a family of overweight alcoholics. And everyone was obese. And we lived on junk food. Bra breakfast was cra Captain Crunch or cookies. And uh, lunch was like maybe some, some uh, candy, like some hard candy. And then dinner would have been like pizza, McDonald's, and Pepsi. Almost always, right? And uh, very seldom that I have any, I don't think I ate vegetables until I was 18, 19. Um, and uh, I ate really, really poorly. So any of you, who, and this is, remember, overweight, alcoholics, drug addicts, this is my family. So if you're someone who has a story about why you can't, uh, call yourself in your bullshit because you can, right? Just because it was something in, in your past or someone in your past had been that way or you thought that this is how you were in the past doesn't mean that's how you have to be today. So I went from this dude to this dude. And how did I do that? Well, to be honest, I had quite a lot of pain around being like the people in my family. I saw, I saw that my family was like, I don't want to be like this, right? I want to be like me. I want to express the greatness that lives inside of me. And I knew that from a very young age, right? I knew that from a young age, I was like, man, something about this just doesn't feel right. I just knew that there was more to life. There was more inside of me, like each and every one of you should know and not, does know, right? Sometimes we deny it because we're afraid to put in the work or we're afraid of maybe judgment or other people saying, oh, you can't do that. Um, but you can and you should. And you owe it to the world and you owe it to yourself to express the greatness within you. Here's why. When you express the greatness within you, you also give other people permission to do the same, right? When you pursue your goals and you accomplish them, Yes, there's going to be people in your immediate life who want to pull you back down. It's the crabs in the bucket, right? They're going to pull you back down. Guess what? As you ascend, you give some people permission to do the same. And some people will always try to pull you back. There's no doubt. 
but you're also giving a, a, the right people permission to come into your life. So if you become the best version of you and you continue to ascend and get better, some people will fall away. There's no question. But people who are more in alignment with you and with the real you, who you really are, in your bigness, in your, high, your highest self, those people will find you. It's not easy, but it's certainly not hard. Okay, it's just uncomfortable. All right, so one of my great friends and, and longtime um, colleagues, Don Saladino, I trained Don for a couple of covers of Muslim Fitness, actually. He's the guy, if you don't know Don, he uh, trains everyone in Hollywood. He trains everyone from like uh, Ryan Reynolds to Hugh Jackman to Blake Lively. Um, he's, he's an amazing trainer out of New York. And so one of the things he said, oh, building a great body is not hard. So I just want to put that there so that you guys can remember. You simply don't know how yet. We're going to teach you again. All right. So one of the things when you start my, if you've anyone here ever been to my courses, my live courses I teach all around the world. Um, so I do prior to COVID, I would teach about one course a month in a different country, three to four days. Sometimes we do multiple weekends and people would show up, pay me thousands of dollars to learn this system. And the first thing I said is right here. And each, I encourage each and every one of you as you uh, expand your horizons around exercise is Forget what you think you know. Read the first line. Forget what you think you know and think. Forget what you think you know and open your mind to the possibility of something different. Because most of you have a belief around what exercise is. That's wrong. Most of you have an old, outdated paradigm that simply is, is call it incomplete. I don't say anything's inaccurate. It's not wrong. It's It's incomplete. Going to the gym, period, is useful. So I can't say that's wrong. But doing things the way that they've been done in the past or you've always been done or maybe the way you're taught in high school gym class is not complete. It's 1% of a huge pie, right? So my, my objective is to start revealing slowly these other pieces of the pie that, guess what, make the biggest difference in your body fast. I call high-impact habits. Think Little hinge, swing big door, right? I want to do this little thing every day that moves the needle a lot. That's how I want you to think about this, okay? All right, so here's a little story about how today came to be. Circa 1999, <laughs> true story. I was, uh, so 1998, I went to Mr. Olympia, and I was uh, 17 years old. I was 150 pounds. I was actually a long-distance runner and a vegetarian. And so I have a big body structure. Like my, my skeletal system is big, a big old head and big hips and big ankles and shit. And so I was at 155 pounds, it's zero muscle. Like I think I had negative muscle. I was like bones and fat and skin and zero muscle, long distance runner. And uh, I went to the Mr. Olympia and I was like, this is what I want to do. I just, there was no doubt in my mind at, at this 155, 160 pound kid, I was, this is what I'm going to do. I said that to my dad. And so I saved money for a year. And I hired a coach in, in 1999. And I paid that coach $10,000. This is a lot. An 18 year old kid, right? Saved a lot of money. I worked hard and I saved and I paid this coach. And I was so committed. I was like, I'm doing this, right? I, everything he said, I was like, I'm, I'm going all in on this coach. And I committed 1,000% to everything he said. And so 10,000 was for a year. Um, so he gave me 10,000 for a year. And so for the first three months, I was really motivated. I was like, I'm just going to crush it. I'm going to do everything. And he says, after about six months, I started to feel really shitty. So I, put, I probably put on um, 25 or 30 pounds. I could put on a good amount of muscle because I remember I went from a long distance rider and vegetarian who didn't eat, like, I'm sorry, I didn't train. Now I started training and I started eating meat. Like I was eating, I was training twice a day sometime. Like I was just really committed. So I made progress, but I felt terrible. And I would ask him, I'd say, coach, um, you know, I feel terrible. He goes, suck it up. Okay. Uh, so, you know, fast forward three months more. And I'm like, man, I'm just, I'm like, I can't even get motivated to go to the gym. Like, I'm a really motivated person. Like, I still feel good. Like, what's up? And he's like, oh, just keep going. Like, just keep doing what you're doing. So has anybody ever been to uh, or worked with a coach in the past? And, and the thing that they said was um, – Hey man, you need to eat like chicken and tuna and fish and broccoli and um, rice cakes, and that's really it. You know, maybe you can take some vitamins. 
uh, whatever, just take vitamins if you want to. There's no real description. And they said, well, when you need to work, when you want to build muscle, the only thing is just do more. Like, so here's your work. Just, you know, you need to lift heavier, compound movements, um, work harder, train more often. Did anybody hear all that stuff? Right. Well, I did too. And so what happened? I felt like shit. I, I started to doubt my own ability to do it. I was like, maybe, maybe I'm not cut out for this, man. Maybe like it's too hard. Like my energy was terrible. I was like having a hard time getting up in the morning and I couldn't get motivated for work. I need to take two scoops of workout. Anybody as old as me will remember Ultimate Orange. You guys remember Ultimate Orange? I had to take that shit. It tasted terrible, but it worked. And I was like, ah, oh. so finally wait till the Ultimate Orange kicks in and maybe I get a black coffee on the way to the gym. And I'm like 18, 19 years old at this point. I'm like, why the hell do I need coffee to go to the gym? I never needed it before. I never needed to get up. So I was like, okay, this is something wrong. And so I started um, questioning um, with my, my personality, I started questioning what, the things I was doing. I'm like, what's missing? Like, is it me or is it the process? And so I decided I wasn't going to give up. And I decided to start exploring this process of coaching and the muscle building process, right? This began my 20 year journey to decode all that goes into muscle building. It's actually more than 20 years now. I'm old. Don't, don't judge me. Um, so, um, yeah, again, that, that's what started this journey from this 16 year old kid who uh, wanted to build a 70 year old kid who wanted to build muscle to now a 40 year old man who's been through uh, t- 10, 12 years of, of competitive professional bodybuilding and uh, had some fun. So I now travel the world teaching thousands and thousands of people uh, how to do this stuff. So we've had some successes. There's some more, I coach top executives, entrepreneurs, athletes, uh, and really anybody who's, who's uh, we'll call it high achievers, right? So what, what is a high achiever? A high achiever is someone who, um, ultimately sets a goal and accomplishes it, right? Most people make excuses. Most people have reasons as to why they can't. A high achiever finds a uh, path. A high achiever finds a way to do it. So of the people on this call, how many of you guys would self-identify as high achievers? Say, so, I'm a high achiever. Here's how I, what that means. I set a goal. I move toward it, right? So my, my guess usually is about 10%, right? 10% of people are high achievers, maybe less right? Here's the thing. You don't, you can choose who you are and what you step into after this day, right? You can choose. I'm going to set a really small goal and move toward it. I'm going to accomplish it. And I'm going to move the next, move the needle again, right? So have you ever heard these typical quotes, these sound bites with respect to exercise? Yeah. And guess what? They work for a very short amount of time. No question. I won't deny that they work because they do for a very short amount of time. But guess what? I'm going to teach you today how everyone can get to the point where these actually benefit you. There's some things that are missing that need to preclude this type of stuff, right? So people see professional bodybuilders or high-level athletes just training really hard, doing more, like do, crushing it. And like this, this like 1% of people succeed when they train like this and 99 percent of people fail when they train like this and it's not because you can't it's because you don't know what has to precede this right so there's there's this phase actually there's a few phases of training that have to precede this there's actually very very specific objective outcomes that i will teach you today that have to precede working hard right working hard matters at some point hard quotations doing more volume can be useful lifting ever can be useful compound lifts eating more all those things can be very useful but you have to make sure you check certain boxes Right? You have to make sure there's certain boxes that get checked before you can benefit from these things. So my, my um, maybe uh, one of the outcomes for today will be no matter what program you've done in the past or no matter what program you may do in the future, the next three months or the next six months should be an investment in your future self. So however, you all, however old you are now, I want you all to stop for a second and close your eyes and go, how, am I gonna, how old am I going to be in five years? I'm going to be 45. So the things I do in the next uh, day, week, month, three months, six months can be an investment in me, myself in five years, or it can be a withdrawal, right? And a withdrawal is like, well, if I eat a bunch of junk food, I'm taking away from my future. If I train well and I learn a new skill or I learn how to do things correctly, I'm investing in my future self. So I want to look back in five years and 10 years and 20 years and high five myself and go, man, you really invested in me. So when I show up and I'm 65 in 25 years, I know that I've deeply invested in myself. I hear, I hear you, Nacho. Um, 
And here's one story that I thought I'd throw in here just for, for entertainment's sake. Um, I read it recently. It's really interesting that, you know, that it, this might sound a little weird to you guys, but I think it was a good story. Um, if you if you put a, a frog in boiling water, it'll, it'll sense the pain and jump out immediately. But if you place it in room temperature water and slowly turn up the heat, the frog will be lured to death by the gradual change. And that seems to be reality with humans too, isn't it? Like if I throw you into a really uncomfortable situation, like, oh shit, I'm out. Whereas most people just find this, this kind of state of mediocrity and complacency, and they're just literally being lured to their own death by not taking any action toward uh, progress, right? And that feels like, uh, again, a really useful metaphor for life. We don't lose our health and fitness in the way we, that we notice, right? It's always like, oh, shit, I wake up in two years and five years and 10 years, and I'm a mess. And now I feel like I, it's too, I'm too far gone, right? So don't let yourself be the frog. Um, and again, just, just reiterating, you don't have to be a genius to be successful in life. Um, we live in the most abundant time in human history. You just have to be smart enough to find someone to show you a path and execute. Average people don't follow through. Don't be average. So question for you guys. Who's, who wants a plan? Who wants a plan to take action in life? I hand you a plan right now. Are you going to do it? Good. I hope so. You can execute, right? Thank you. Everybody give me a hell yeah, right? Let's do this. Let's get motivated. Motivation matters for a short period of time. Then clarity matters, right? Hopefully all through these, these lessons we've gone through so far, you guys have got some motivation. You've got some clarity. Maybe you're starting to question your own bullshit. That's important, right? Question your own BS. Sorry, those kids around. I apologize. Um, I know it's early Saturday morning, but Listen, if, if there is a plan, because there is a plan, right? There, and here's the crazy thing. Every person that go, not every, most people that go through my coaching are uh, of the mentality, or end up being of the mentality that, man, this is so much easier than I thought. Like, yes, because you're doing the right thing. This doesn't have to be hard. Yeah, so don't be the person who follows a plan when it's convenient, simple, or easy. Simply create a plan, follow it. All right. Look at a handsome face. People like this. That's, that's kind of a disturbing face. But I threw it in there because I thought it was good. Um, here's my first success tip. I told you I was going to give you three success tips. Here's one. Write it down. Your goals are too small. Your goals are too small because you're afraid of failing. You're afraid of ridicule. You're afraid of people judging you. You're afraid of your own judgment of against yourself if you fail. Set bigger goals and burn the boats. Set a goal, create a deadline, burn the boats. You don't succeed without a deadline. You don't succeed without a goal that's really big. Which 17-year-old kid who never, basically never worked out, I probably worked out for six months, says, I'm going to be Mr. Olympia. Didn't quite make it, but it came damn close. Right At some point, I was eight, top, eight in, top eight in the world. And uh, I came damn close. So... Right, you may not you may not fully accomplish your goal, but you'll you'll land amongst the stars. So set a goal and make it bigger than you think. Right, if you want, if everyone says I want to put on like this is this is the most common thing I hear from all the people that I get on the phone with. I want to add like ten pounds of muscle, and I want to lose like ten pounds of fat. Except it's more like, hey, you need to put on like twenty pounds of muscle and lose like thirty pounds of fat. So don't be uh, shy. Don't be um, you know conservative with your goals. Be honest with yourself. All right, if you got a pen, write this down. I will blank by blank. And the third one is, I will start today by five high impact habits. What are they? We can walk through and you actually will get some out of this, out of this webinar today. Success tip number two, you must change your relationship with hard. All right, talked about it. Nothing's hard. Everybody think of something right now. That was once hard, but is now easy. Riding a bike, speaking a language, doing the job you currently do. I don't know, maybe lifting a certain amount of weight, right? Think about it. We talked about that. So people that succeed intentionally seek new challenges. This is something that I want to throw in here. 
alpha males, alpha females. What does that mean? We live in a society that is incredibly soft and incredibly focused on immediate gratification, instant gratification, right? Um, and if you're someone who want, who needs instant gratification, you will always fall short of your goals. Be aware of the trap of instant gratification. The goal is not likes on Instagram. The goal is to become the type of person who is uh, sets goals and accomplishes goals, right? Yes. I thought this was a good quote too. Um, just to kind of put everyone in, in the right mindset. When you're good at something, you'll tell everyone. When you're great, they'll tell you. Walter Payton, the great Walter Payton. That was a great quote. All right, here's the last one. Success tip number three before we get into the muscle building stuff. Change your language. Everybody screenshot that. Actually, don't screenshot it because my face looks ugly. But <laughs> uh, I can't. It's hard. I have to. Impossible. Try. I can't. I don't know. Uh, I should. There's another one that should be on there too. Should. Get rid of those things, right? Yes, you can. I don't know how yet, right? All right. So we just have you guys kind of close your eyes and fast forward. Let's say five years. So what does my body look like? So I don't ever done that. Then So we've been lately doing um, like 25-year framework. So like what does your life look like in 25 years? What does your body look like in 25 years? What does it look like in six months? Do you have clarity on that? Does it look the same as it is now? Do you have a clear image in your mind of what it looks like? And if you do, dial up the knob a little bit. Make it a little bit better than it is even there. What would it look like? Everybody asks this question. What would it look like with 20 pounds more muscle and maybe 20 pounds leaner? How'd that feel? You know what it would feel? You'd feel this, these things right here on the, on the screen. You'd feel confident. you feel pride. Be proud. You should be proud of yourself. You should feel self-respect. You feel motivation, right? No, that's not the same as ego. And that's why I build that in there. It's motivation, all these things, not the same as ego. All right. Who's ready? Let's crush it. All right. Two things I want to accomplish right now. Is one, I want to show you how to break down the walls you set in your mind. That's really what we've been doing for the last 20 minutes. It's like all these mental barriers you create have just been hopefully helping you wipe them out. I can't, I don't have the time, I don't have the genetics. Uh, it's hard. Um, I don't know how. Those are all uh, bullshit stories. You can learn and you can overcome them. And the second one is to show you a step-by-step -step process to build more muscle than the old version of you thought was possible. So you can start 2022, which is now three months away, three and a half months away, as the new and improved version of yourself. You cannot change the world. That's, that sounds... You cannot change what's happening in the world right now. The only thing you can control is your life, right? How you show up in the world today. How you show up in the world is by accomplishing goals and stepping into your best, the highest and best. All right. You're lacking four things, right? Clear and measurable goals, a proven action plan, daily action, daily committed action, and follow through and accountability. That's it. That's what we're missing. All right, so if you guys want to screenshot that, you want to you want to record that, you want to remember that, write that down. That's what you need. It's, it's you know, on the bottom. A goal plus a deadline plus an action plan plus follow through. That's what we need, right? That's, that's what results are, and I'll, every one of you can do it. I want to give you the blueprint today for your body and mind. Everybody good with that? Yeah, get to it, man. Let's get to it. Give me the goods. All right. First, this, building muscle. Everybody give me your attention for a minute, full attention. If you're doing something else, stop, give me your attention. This is, this, this is very, very important. This framing alone will change your ability to get results. In life, you're in a constant flux of anabolism and catabolism. You're either building up or you're breaking down. It's never stagnant. Okay, so your body's either building or breaking down. Most of us in the current society live in a constant state of catabolism, which is breaking down. Usually when we're breaking down, it's not just breaking down fat tissue, it's breaking down muscle tissue. Because when we're in a stress state, our body is breaking down well, both muscle fat, carbohydrates, glycogen, it's all just breaking down. It's using the, those um, substrates for fuel. Right? We're often breaking down. And that's a, that's a result of overstimulation of stressful systems and, and, and hormones in, in the body, ultimately, right? And the other side is this anabolism, 
And this is the, uh, you know, the, the ultimate growth and uh, restoration and recovery of the system, right? So think of these two things as being in constant flux. So therefore, if you're someone who wants to build muscle, yes, I need to be stimulating these anabolic systems more, right? I just, that's number one, I need to stimulate the anabolic systems more than the catabolic ones. Two, I need to make sure the muscle tissue is more anabolic than the fat tissue. How do I do that? All right, we'll get to it. So there are your anabolic and catabolic signals. You guys can screenshot that. This one might be better. Same thing, I just added hormones at the bottom. So screenshot that one, look at it. Now here's the thing. Have you guys heard of the autonomic nervous system before? Most of you have heard of it, don't know what it means. Adam, autonomic nervous system is, is sensing my environment at all times. And it's either um, realizing that I need more energy to produce, I need to produce more energy. So I wake up in the morning, my body goes, shoot, I need a bunch of energy. It starts to mobilize a bunch of cortisol and starts to mobilize energy so you can have enough energy to function the day, right? As your body turns down at night, your body goes, it's time to recover. So the balance of those two systems, sympathetic versus parasympathetic, sympathetic think stress, parasympathetic think recovery, the balance of those two systems is exactly the parallel to the stressful system, the breakdown system, and the, the uh anabolic system, the rest, digest, and recover system. It's literally the same thing, just a different way to, to explain it. So I need to have my body, if I'm trying to build muscle, uh, actively pursuing more of what's called a parasympathetic state. Therefore, I need more parasympathetic inputs. Everybody with me? All these things on the anabolic list are your parasympathetic inputs, right? How you think about parasympathetic, the, the parasympathetic system. I need to stimulate the system so my body is more likely to be in recovery mode than it is to be in, in burn mode, right? It needs to be in stress mode. How many of you think you're in parasympathetic mode more than you're in sympathetic mode? Most of us are not. Some of us are. But the objective then should be two hours a day in sympathetic and 22 hours a day in parasympathetic. Why? That, then that's that's it may be a vast generalization, but two hours a day is when I train. I want to be sympathetic. I want to be driven. I want to be a warrior, right? And then the rest of the day, I want to be a monk. I'll be the warrior and the monk, right? So that's how we frame uh, progress. And if you're not that, you simply aren't giving your body the signal to build muscle. If you're someone who's constantly stressed, if you're constantly anxious, if you're constantly fight or flight, if you're angry about things all the time, your body will not build muscle act actively. So guess what happens when people do that? They say, start saying things like, I can't, I don't, I, I'm not able to, I don't have the genetics. And that's completely nonsense. You just simply haven't tipped the scales in favor of telling your body, hey, body, you need to retain more of this muscle tissue. So that's one thing, right? We're tipping the scales toward muscle tissue. The other one is, now I need to give my body a signal to say, hey, body, I want this muscle to be anabolic more than this fat. Because, it, it, yes, it's parasympathetic to just sit on my ass and be on the couch all day. No question, that's very sympathetic. But then I'm telling my muscle signals, that my, my fat uh, cells to be anab uh, anabolic, not my muscle cells to be anabolic. You with me? So we need then the signal to tell the muscle cells to turn on, to turn the switch, right? So we want to stimulate the parasympathetic nervous system kind of constantly, and that's breathing and walking and meditation and uh, being in nature and all these things that are listed here, right? Keeping your body healthy. If you guys heard my definition of health before you've been on these webinars, you've heard it. What's my definition of health? The ability to adapt to imposed demand. What's an imposed demand? Any stress you subject your body to. If I say, hey, training, this is an imposed demand. If I go for I don't know, a long walk or any, any type of stress, even if it's like a financial stress, if it's a relational stress, those that's an imposed demand. Even sitting down to, to think is an imposed demand. I need my body to adapt really quickly to that imposed demand or what happens. It doesn't adapt, doesn't respond, right? It takes longer. When you're a child, you adapt quick because you're healthy. As we age, adaptation takes longer, not because we're aging, but because we're less healthy. Take care of your health, you adapt quicker. Everybody with me? This is important. This is As soon as you flip this switch, if I'm constantly going, okay, I need this switch being flipped, and think of it like a, a light switch, right? So what are the things that flip the light switch toward anabolism? Sleep, protein, carbohydrates, fats, right? Hydration, all these things are, are contributing to the anabolic signals. You with me?
All right, so there's your primary, you know, we want, we want to feel great, we want to have an abundance of energy, we want to recover well. That's kind of how we know that we're parasympathetically dominant. How do we do it? There's your list. I'm going to walk through those relatively quickly cookie because I got a bunch more to go. I don't want to keep you guys here all day. Here's how we can measure. Everybody screenshot this. Here's how we, we should be able to measure. So yeah, obviously we know we can measure blood and urine and stool. We can also measure heart rate and heart rate variability. Heart rate variability is the study of the dynamic balance of the autonomic nervous system, right? What does that mean? Is it, am I stressed or am I recovering? And if I have a low heart rate variability, that means my body tends to be more stressed. If I have a high heart rate variability, my body is more variable. It means my body is really well recovered. So I want to be aware of heart rate variability. That's why I wear this thing all the time. This is how I measure my heart rate variability. I say, like, how did I sleep? How has my body recovered? And my body is recovered. That means I can train harder. I can train more often. My body is not recovered. I have to decrease my training volume, right? De decrease my training um, frequency even. So there's a lot of things on there that are um, useful measures of where my body is as far as recovery. Look at number six, the number of days to recovery. That's super important. If you're taking more than two days to recover from, recover from a workout, your body recovery is poor, right? How's your just daily energy? Do you have an abundance of energy or are you lacking it? Right? How's your sex drive? How's your desire for sex? Is it low? If it's low, chances are your recovery is poor, your heart variability is poor. How's your hunger? You know, we, we always always joke that it's like happy, hungry, horny. Maybe that's it. Just point me one more than I can't remember. <laughs> that's it. That's important stuff. Okay. All right. Here's a muscle building checklist. So again, this is a lot. You need to write, you need to screenshot this if you want. But when it comes to, I'm going to go through a couple of these things in a minute. But when it comes to developing a plan to, um, you know, ultimately change your body over the next six months, these are, these are, see those titles there, movement, nourishment, breathing. Um, those are framed around the six pillars of a lean, healthy, and muscular body, right? So what are the six pillars? How I move, how I eat, how I breathe, how I think, how I sleep, and the environment in which I do them. i say it again, move, eat, breathe, think, sleep. And the environment in which I do them. There's only six inputs we have as humans. Did you know that? There's only six things we can do into the, input into the system, and those are them, right? So, and then there's many subcategories underneath, but that's really the reality. So, yeah, I can move in a thousand different ways, but the way I move is what's impacting my internal system. So, here's how I want you guys give me attention for one second. It's important. Here's how I want you to frame this the expression of your body on the outside, the way your body looks the way it expresses, is a result of the internal chemistry, the internal biology, the internal biochemistry inside your body, right? So if I'm, if I'm using these external signals like movement and eating and breathing and sleeping and thinking and the light and the environment as my external inputs to create an internal system. So I need to be in control of all of these external signals in order to determine what my internal, sig my in internal uh, system looks and feels like. That makes sense? So if you're trying to change your body, you got to understand the pillars, right? And again, I gave you these pillars, not because I want to go through them all today, just so you can screenshot it and refer back to them in the future. So these are all the things that go into it. There's another list here, page two. So these are all the things that um, you maybe want to explore. The environment's interesting, right? The environment, when people don't realize how maybe your environment is the single greatest influence on your uh, decision-making, on your state, Right, because the light, the air, the sound, the EMF, and the people are massive, massive. So I don't spend too much time on that. I just want to get give you guys that because if your objective in the next three to six months is transforming your body, does everybody have that objective? Are you here? So again, guys, let, let's write this in the box. What is your goal right now? Tell me your goal. Is your goal to build muscle? Is your goal to lose fat? Is it to transform? And what's your timeline? Right, everyone, everyone, everybody, write that in the chat box. Find the chat box right now. And tell me what your goal is. I want to build muscle. Be specific. I want to build twenty pounds of muscle in three months. I want to build. 30 pounds of muscle in a year. What's the goal? I want to lose 20 pounds of fat. I want to lose 20 pounds of muscle and build 20 pounds of or opposite. I want to build 20 pounds of muscle and lose 20 pounds of fat. All right. So here's what you got to prioritize when you start. Everybody should look at this. Everybody should write this down. If these things, now here's the thing. Some people are already good at these. And if you're already, you're already good and, and efficient at all of these, then you can move on to phase two. But this is what the priority of phase one should be for everybody. It means, and I'll, it's all, the next slide is more about what intelligent training means. So I'll give you a little bit of detail. 
And then you, get, you have to have the right mindset. We've gone through that. Got to have great sleep. You got to have stress reduction strategies to improve your heart rate variability. BMW, WM is breathe, walk, meditate. Um, got to have good gut health, inflammation, digestion, assimilation. That's number, number five. Number six, you have to have a good aerobic fitness. That doesn't mean you pursue, um, I'm not trying to make you a marathon runner, but you have to have a, a very adequate level of aerobic fitness. If it's in, if it's in impedance, it will definitely hinder muscle growth. Uh, number seven, micronutrient status. So you need to have uh, ultimately no lacking nutrients. And number eight, hydration. These are all things that, so when you start with my coaching, these are the boxes that we check in phase one. So everyone goes, hey, man, what do we do in the first 30 days? This. And hopefully, if, if you've already got some of them, we can move right past it quickly. But these are the things we do first. Here's why. Most people come into my coaching and they come in with what I call landmines. They're walking in and they're walking in a field of landmines. So when you create a stress, let's say your, your sleep is poor, your, your training is poor, your hydration is poor. Every stress you create is literally like digging a hole. Are you digging? Every time I go train, I dig a hole. I don't fin- fill the hole back in. I'm, I'm lacking something. I'm, I'm deficient in something, right? So uh, I have to fill the hole back in. Most people come in and there's just, there's just holes all around. They're lacking sleep. They're lacking micronutrients. Their training's poor. So my first goal is let's fill in the landmines. So we don't ultimately, we can ultimately just improve our base level health, our recoverability that allows us to progress. Everybody with me? Okay, that's phase one. So when we come into my coaching program, phase one, we call it a foundational phase. We lay a foundation for lifelong progress because these are the habits I need you guys to do every day to make sure that this is what you have um, as a baseline. And then from there, we move to what's called an optimization phase. And optimization is like, now we're going to start tr- increasing the training volume, incre- increasing the training intensity. People start to grow. Phase three is performance. Performance is we've reached this high level of performance and now we're going to sustain that. And we're going to, we're going to, that's where we're really, so that's the, the point. And when you reach phase three of my coaching, that's where it's like, you don't ever experience where it's like, man, like I wake up every day and I look better. I wake up every day and I'm leaner. So I don't ever experience that. So that's, that's what it should look like, right? When you get to the point where you're really firing all cylinders, your training is great. Your body feels great. Your sleep is great. Your body just, just like this. So I aim to get there when I was like 12 to 14 weeks out from a contest. It's like, I'm just like training at full speed. I'm eating a lot of calories or full intensity. I'm eating a lot of calories. My body's just, every day I wake up, I'm leaner. It's just, it's just coming in every day. That's the objective. And we can get there. It's just a matter of going through the foundational phase first. So most people try to go directly to the performance phase, right? They try to go, hey, I'm just going to go in the gym and I'm going to crush it. But they haven't laid the foundation. They don't recover well. It takes them four or five days to recover. Their digestion's a mess. Their sleep's a mess. Like I'm, I'm, so they're putting more stress into an already broken system, right? If the system is broken, you can't put more stress on it. You got to replenish the holes first. Does that make sense? All right. So foundational phase one. Again, you guys can screenshot this. I'm not going to spend huge amounts of time on this, but this is what we would go through, right? So again, this is what we went through on today's webinar, right? So first thing, get to have a, get to have a great mindset. Um, maybe the big thing I'll go through today is the the biggest mistakes, instant gratification, lack of clear goals, and entitlement. So you guys can walk, be welcome to screenshot that. Again, this is all the stuff we've gone through already. This is the review. Sleep and skating rhythms, you got to improve that in phase one. So, so important. Stress management. Again, you guys are all welcome to screenshot this if you like. Um, reduction, you need stress reduction strategies. And the simplest one, guys, if we don't know what to do to reduce stress, prioritize breathing, walking, and meditating. That's it. I mean, you'd be in nature, right? Those are your priorities and perspective shifts. Phase one, how to prioritize gut health. There's a few action items on there for you. Eliminate pesticides. I know that's controversial, but it's not. If you're destroying a microbiome, your health is compromised. Reduce or eliminate antibiotics. Reduce or eliminate chlorine. Um, Eat diverse plant foods and spend time in nature. Believe it or not, the best way to replenish a microbiome is by spending time breathing in nature. Uh, aerobic fitness again, as I said, you don't need to have you don't need to be an aerobic uh, or marathon runner. You just need to have an insure, you need to have a baseline amount of aerobic fitness. You don't, um, you simply can't get there. And there's how you get there. So four to five times a week is is how we is where we improve it, and then two times a week to sustain it. Uh, micronutrients, those are the primary ones that I think you guys that everyone needs. So if you started my coaching, those are the ones that I usually will address first. 
mag, zinc, chromium, boron, sodium, potassium, and selenium. And the final one is hydration. Actually, no, the final one is hydration. The final one is training. So I'll spend a few more minutes on this. So you got in the beginning, I said um, the objective is to get to uh, be able to being able to train hard, right? The objective is to be able to do compound lifts and be able to train hard and be able to just add more volume and your body just grows. That's the performance phase. That's the third phase. But the thing that needs to precede that is this. Everybody read this first point here, the skeletal system uh, and muscular system in alignment. I should probably emphasize that. In alignment, right? So what does that mean? So uh, your, your skeletal system and your muscular system have to be structurally aligned. So think of a joint having muscles on every side of the joint pulling in all these different directions. If one side of the joint is too tight, it's going to pull the joint out of alignment and it's going to pull the whole system out of alignment, right? So everything in your body is connected. So if anything in the body is out of alignment, it throws the whole system out of alignment. So therefore, when I go and do um, any exercises on top of that and I add muscle, I'm literally creating a dysfunctional system. So here's the way I like to explain this to you guys. Um, if we went out right now, we went for a run and we went for a sprint and we went a full out 100% max effort sprint, how many people could do it? Answer, maybe some, probably let's say 50% of people could, could actually sprint at max speed and not hurt themselves. Well, the whole point then is like, how do I get you guys all to the point where you could do that, right? I want you to run a world-class 400 meters around a track. And uh, well, I could, we could just go out there and do it. You could do it maybe once, but if I asked to do it again, what would happen? You get injured or you get tired or whatever. So I want to get you to the point where you can do that, but obviously not run the 400 meters. It's what we, that's the equivalent of what we would do in the gym. So I need you to be able to go in there every day and go out that max intensity at, at you know, the 400 meter sprint on repeat and be able to come back again tomorrow and do it again without injury and, uh, you know, ultimately without taking four or five days to recover. That's the performance phase, right? And you guys are all two months away from that if you commit to, doing things correctly, two to three months away, depending how many kind of gaps we have to follow and how diligent you are with following the plan, right? So if I give you a plan for phase one and phase two, uh, again, some people it's take three to six months to finish those two phases. But you, so here's the thing. It's not like you just follow the plan. You, you got to check boxes, right? You got to be able to finish those phases and say, yes, I can do this and I can do this. And those, all those eight things that I said just a couple of slides back. Yes, I have great sleep. Yes, I have great microbiome. Yes, I have great uh, inflammation. Yes, I'm, I'm now uh, believe I can do this. And then we phase, we scale through phase two and then into phase three. And that's really, guys, the results is just unbelievable. That's when we start to put on these huge amounts of muscle in six months. So how then do we do that? Three things. Everybody write these down. Mobility, stability, skill. How do we how do we align the skeletal system and muscular system? All right, guys, anybody have questions before we jump into the, the final aspect of the webinar? Cool. I'm going to get back in there. All right. So um, this is this is a missing piece for all of you guys, right? And, and I've trained thousands, maybe not 100,000, but probably damn close to pe people in my life. And um, if, you're, if your system is balanced, your muscular system is balanced, you can go and train and uh, make progress doing anything and, and not hurt yourself. Right? Here's the thing. If you don't train the system well, meaning balance, think balanced joint forces, right? So if like I have muscle on this side, it's pulling the joint out of alignment, or if I train that muscle too much compared to the opposite side, then I start to develop unbalanced joint forces, and all of a sudden my body starts to get injured or, or, or have pain. So in, unbalanced joint forces can come from doing too much of an exercise. It can come from doing exercises incorrectly. It can come from sitting posture. It can come from so many like poor shoes, so many things that can, that can cause this lack of muscular and skeletal alignment. And this is, the, this is what happens in the foundational phase. I call it a primer phase. Have you guys ever heard me talk about a neurological primer phase? That's what this is. Yeah, so it's just like, I need to prime your body so all these muscles actually know what to do. Think of your muscles. Here's a simple way to look at it, actually. I heard this lady tell a story yesterday. She said, um, imagine, I want you all to imagine for a second that it's nighttime and you're in a helicopter flying over New York City. And you can see most of the lights are on, but a few of the lights are off, right? And so... There's, there's like huge subsections of the city where the lights are off, it's just like lights are on or nobody's home, right? Lights are off. So that's your body. So your body, some of the lights are really on. Some muscles are just turned on and some of them are just completely turned off. 
So our job then is to go like, how can I go and turn all those lights on in that area so the whole system, the whole city gets lit up? And the city has to be lit up in relatively equal proportion. Otherwise, it starts to become imbalanced. That's a simple way to think about it. Many people have these, these some, some muscles are really well turned on, and some of them are just off. So think about it like that. All right. <laughs> um, my uh, lack of political correctness sometimes. Um, biggest mistakes in training, your ex execution sucks because your body's out of alignment. That's simply true. Uh, if your body's in alignment, your execution, uh, your execution automatically gets better. Um, your chain, this is another one. Everybody pay attention to this. Your training, you're changing your training too often. So if you're not following a plan and actually doing it consecutive weeks, and so this is, this is a huge paradigm shift for people. People think that you need novelty to progress. You, or to make, to get results, you don't you need progress. So if I give you the same exercises, let's say I give you five exercises and we do it every week for six weeks, instead of now having my brain focus on learning a new exercise, my brain's focused on getting better at the exercise that I'm currently doing. And so it gets better and better and better. It gets stronger, it gets more effective, it gets more efficient. And then I can focus on effort. So one of the biggest mistakes people make is doing too many exercises and sucking in all of them. That's, that's true. So when you start my, my programs, usually the foundational programs are written with a total of 24 exercises. Do you know there's eight body part, eight muscle groups? So that means there's three per muscle group, three exercises. You're like, what? Yes. Is it boring? Maybe. Does it work? Very much so. Very, very much so. Um, all right. You're not training frequently enough. That's another big thing. Everyone, everyone gets into the bro split of like, I've got to train my pecs on Monday and only on Monday. It's a terrible old paradigm. Um, you guys should be training every body part more than uh, once a week at, at most level. Like when you're at the highest level of a pro bodybuilder, maybe, maybe you can do it once a week. But most people should be doing things every, every body part every three to five days, depending on the size of the body part and how hard you train. Anybody have questions? No. Well, was that was that valuable for you guys? I guess if nobody has questions, that means I did an amazing job or I did a terrible job. Which one is? <laughs> Hopefully, it was useful, guys. I, there's so much we we can share with you, right? There's so much that I can continue to impart. And you guys know I traveled the world. Uh, well, prior to COVID, and I travel the world and teach thousands of people around the world. Coaches, uh, I teach coaches, I teach educators, I teach anyone who wants to build their body. Ultimately, this new paradigm, right? What I, I teach them what I call an internal view of exercise. What's an internal view of exercise? Instead of thinking of exercise as existing outside of your body, think of exercise as existing inside of your body, right? So exercise is, is this, uh, well, ultimately, it's that dynamic interplay between things that happen outside of your body, which are imparting force against my body, and the things that are happening inside of my body, which is these, these uh, movement generating machines. So I want to take an internal view of exercise. So are the muscles contracting? Is it maximum, creating maximum tension? What's the response of that muscle creating in my body, right? So as I challenge that muscle, what's, it, what's that doing to my internal system? So I want to create an internal system that is ready to grow and adapt and uh, respond, right? That's how we that's how we frame exercise. That's an internal view of exercise. Has anyone ever heard that before? Yeah, so we think about exercise. Most people are focused on what's happening outside of their body, right? Sets, reps, and volume, moving weight from point A to point B. Throw that out the window. Start thinking about what's happening inside of my body. So the next time you step in the gym, start going, what is this muscle that I'm trying to train? Am I actually training it? And can I make it harder? Listen, what's the muscle I'm trying to train? Am I actually training it and can I make it harder? Right. So, and, and actually training it means if I'm doing a chest press, do you all know that most people can do a chest press and not work their chest at all? Most people can, can figure out ways to, tra to train their chest almost zero during a chest press. And people go, man, I'm doing a bench press and my pecs aren't growing because you're not doing, not training your pecs. Right. You need to learn to train muscles, not movements. Challenge muscles, don't complete movements. Right. All right, so you guys know that, uh, as I said, I travel the world teaching. I, I have uh, very, very high-level coaching clients that work with me from all around the world. I work with executives, athletes, entrepreneurs, and high achievers from all around the world, and uh, I love it. You know, what I love more than anything is seeing the lights go on, seeing the lights go on, make people realize that, uh, gosh, I can do this. You know, gosh, I can build muscle. Gosh, I can lose fat. And 
it's so much easier than we thought. And I, I'd love to share some amazing examples with you guys of people who over the last five years, three years, one year, have just made so much drastic change and their life shifts, right? Their confidence skyrockets, their belief in themselves skyrockets. And sometimes they don't even notice, right? They're just kind of going through life and they're just like, wow, like this is so easy, thank you. And uh, that's what the most empowering thing is for me, right? Is giving you guys the keys to your new life and to know your new body. And uh, I think we can all ultimately show up at our highest and best. My my vision or my mission is to make the world a better place, right? And that sounds like this, this kind of cliche statement, but here's how we do that. Here's how we do that. The only thing I can do is show up as my best. That's it. And when I show up at my best, maybe I give you permission to show up at your best. And maybe I can I can support you in showing up in your best. Here's why. If you feel better about yourself and you show up at your best, and you feel your energy best and your, your relational best and your physical best, maybe you show up better for your spouse. Maybe you show up better for your kids. Maybe you show up better in your business. And all of a sudden, they start to realize like, oh, my mom, my dad, my spouse, my partner is showing up better for me. Maybe that gives me permission to show up better for myself, right? And then it's this, this spiral effect that just starts to, to expand. And ultimately, everyone just makes the world a better place. So my commitment to you guys is I want to show up for you guys every day and be the best version of myself and give you permission to do the same for you. Everybody with me on that? So if you're going through hard times, which many people are, um, the only thing you have control over is how you show up every day. Create yourself every morning and go to bed every night being grateful for uh, this amazing gift that we have. So um, anybody interested in um, me showing you how to achieve an amazing transformation for life? If I handed you the blueprint to build your muscle, uh, lose your fat, and ultimately live your greatest life in the next 36 months, um, we're taking on a very small number of coaching clients as I say, guys, it's, it's um, you know, I work with a lot of people, a lot of very high level people, and uh, we want to take this information and pass it to you guys so you can ultimately thrive. So the one thing that I, I suggest is taking a small amount of time and investing deeply in the topic, right? If I want to learn about neuroscience, I want to invest deeply for six months or 12 months in neuroscience, and then I have a decent understanding. And that's really what the goal of this coaching is. Is a, is a deep investment in understanding training and understanding recovery and understanding mindset and understanding lifestyle design. There's four primary things that I say that I frame go into a transformation. Training, nutrition, lifestyle, mindset, right? And so each of you right now, how would you rate yourself on those four things? Training, nutrition, lifestyle, and mindset. How'd you rate yourself on a scale of one to five? Right? And this is a question I ask often. And if you're not a three, or above, if you're not a four or above, your results obviously aren't going to be where you want them to be, right? So our objective is how do we then create the path to take you to a five out of five, right? Is it possible? Yes. Is it easy? No. But well, simple, we'll say, right? Simple. 